So I have this 7x7 composite shed. Composite meaning plastic, basically. Now, these sheds, just like any of the others, have their pros and cons. On one hand, they're cheap and easy to assemble. I did this in about three or four hours. However, on the flip side, the walls I have found are not very sturdy. Three composite panels per side make up a wall, and they're held together by these clips, which have a tendency to pop out of their seats if too much pressure is applied to the inside of the wall. Once they pop, they never really seat correctly again, just FYI. So that basically rules out hanging any kind of shelving system to the shed walls. Yes, the maker of these composite sheds do sell a hanging system, but based on my experience, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. So that leaves me doing what I do best, DIY. So I'll take some interior measurements, front to back, side to side, top to bottom. After a quick trip to the home improvement store for some two by fours and some OSB board, it's time to fire up the power tool. Now, as you can see here, I still don't have the outfeed support reattached to my workstation, which is actually getting a little bit of annoying. So I'll get that stuck back on there and then I'll do a video on it and get that up in the next week or so. For right now, however, I've built my roll around cabinets at the same height as the workstation so that in a pinch, I can just use them. After ripping some two by fours in half on the table saw, it was over to the miter saw to cut everything to length. Once all the formalities are out of the way, I can start putting stuff together. So first I'll lay all of my pieces out in their approximate positions. Now the top piece, I'll cut long enough to set on top of the vertical pieces and I'll attach those with three inch screws from the top down. All of the subsequent shelf pieces will get cut three inches shorter and attached with screws from the side. Now, normally I don't like to set screws from the side in a project like this because their shear strength tends to be a bit hit or miss. However, for various reasons, I decided to go ahead and use them like that in this project. And I'll talk more about the reasons for that on the blog post. Go ahead and check the description. I'll have all the links in there. Once I have the front and back frames assembled, I'll flip one up and attach the side framing pieces. Flip it around and do the other side. There will be more shelves to this, and you may be asking why didn't I attach the framing for those shelves at this stage? Well, I just wasn't sure what I wanted my shelf height to be. Future me knows that, but past me is just winging it. The shelving material I'm using is just this half inch OSB board. It is beyond the scope of this video to get into the pros and cons of using OSB in areas or applications that would potentially expose it to high levels of moisture. <gasps> and it's boring, so you can just talk about it amongst yourself. This is the most cost effective material to use. I've never had an issue using it, so I'm using it. I'm gonna mark an inch and a half by an inch and a half and notch out each of the corners for the shelves. Once I have the first one cut, I'll use that to mark out the rest of them. You see the wobble in that unit right there? Funny story, there's an oak tree just outside my garage, and right now in Florida, oak trees are dropping acorns. My kids, they like to collect them and pop the tops off of them. One of those tops got kicked into the shop, and unbeknownst to me, I set the frame down on one of them, causing this wobble only. I don't know that yet. So I'm getting more and more frustrated thinking I'm gonna have to find out what piece of this puzzle is causing that. In about five or 10 minutes from now, I'm gonna realize what's going on, and boy, am I gonna feel sheepish. Never measure if you don't have to. A spacer keeps all sides of my shelves level. After all that is done, I'll just tack the shelves in place with a few brad nails. Because of the dimensions of my shed, the shelving units I built are only 12 inches deep by four feet wide. If you build some that are bigger or deeper, you may need to take stock of what you'll be putting on them and then add an extra shelf support to prevent shelf sag. Also, because of the height to depth ratio, these are not designed to be standalone. They will be top heavy 
and you can probably tell that from me working on them. If they're going in a garage, I recommend attaching them to studs in a wall. I, however, have another idea in mind for mine. I've designed a U-shaped setup for my shed that will lend support and strength without having to be attached to a wall. This is a basic wall frame construction, 16 inches on center. Then I'll just line up that back leg of the shelving unit and attach with three inch screws. Now I have some old shop cabinets that used to be hanging in my garage and since I've taken them down they've just sort of been taking up space in the shed. So I thought now is a good time to put them to use again. Attaching a ledger board gives me something to set the cabinets on while I attach them to the back frame. Now, it is time for proper organization of shed paraphernalia. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Pinterest. If you like this video, here's a couple more you'll like as well. Until then.